I have a confession to make, all right? I actually really liked and probably still do like the older Dilbert comic strip a lot, actually. Um, I think that back in my parents' place, there are a couple of like combined volumes of them. Uh, back like when it was being produced in, I don't know, the 90s? For those of you who don't know, Dilbert is, it's just like a, a comic strip. It's a really big and influential one. Maybe this is more of a boomer thing. Where, you know, maybe you're just too Zoomer, but it's basically just like a satirical, like, haha, everyone in my office is a dumbass kind of comedy strip made by a guy called Scott Adams, who is completely insane. He is absolutely insane. I'm not saying this euphemistically. He has grown increasingly like far right MAGA chud tier over time to the point where he is, I genuinely think now, like, actually like actually kind of insane. Uh, he blocked me on Twitter a while back after calling me a pile, so I know he knows. Uh, that I exist, which I think is incredibly funny, but uh, he's in hot water right now. See, as is so often the case with people who um, are going insane, it starts to affect their work a little bit. Uh, there are lots of examples of this, but I have one right off the bat, okay? So I'm just gonna, just no context, let's just go over this, okay? I just learned, this is from Scott Adams, I just learned that a newspaper group won't run my upcoming comic strip that introduces the first black character, Dave, to the Dilbertverse. Okay, let's take a look at the comic that Scott Adams has birthed, has introduced to the world. The boss says, management asked me to add some diversity to the engineering team. Meet Dave. Dave then says, I identify as white. The boss says, you're ruining everything, Dave. Incredible. The apex of, of humor and conservative messaging uh, uh, brought together in 2022, if you can see the date right there. So this was cutting edge comedy. Obviously, this is like brazenly partisan for a Sunday or Saturday morning cartoon published in newspaper strips. You know, they're not, you know, people don't usually open up the, the, the Sunday funnies to read like peanuts. And then they look at like right wing culture war, blue hair pronouns joke. You know? And I think it kind of reveals a bit about Scott Adams' mindset. Keep in mind, Scott Adams is like a very well-known, very popular comic artist. So it still comes across as a little bit brazen and crass for him to say, yeah, we finally introduced a black character and then did so only to make an attack helicopter joke. You know what I mean? Like, we're not talking about somebody who works at the Daily Wire here. Like, th this, this is somebody who's been considered kind of a beloved component of cheesy Saturday morning cartoon strips for a while. And not just to conservatives, like, to everyone. It gets funnier, though. Oh, that's right, I'm sorry. <laughs> Apparently, Scott Adams didn't realize weekday strips don't print in color, which accidentally makes this the funniest deal written years. That's incredible, I forgot about that. Oh my god. Only the Sunday ones print in color. Yes! Now this is funny. Uh, albeit unintentionally on his part. So anyway, he's been deteriorating for a while. I, I actually think that a lot of people read a kind of progressive or at least pro-worker sentiment into some of his earlier comic strips, you know, for the majority of the comics runtime. I don't really think they're like that. There's a recurring message that um, corporate bureaucracy is bad that bosses, management, and owners tend to be like buffoons who are self-interested and incompetent and people fail upwards. But I think in retrospect, the messaging of the comic is more of like Squidward, um, everyone is stupid except me, <laughs> than it is any kind of like actual systemic critique of the way corporate power structures operate. There's no advocacy for any kind of like meaningful workplace democracy or or any real challenge to corporate power structures. It's just more of a Rick Sanchez, everything would be better if I was in charge kind of vibe, which is more libertarian than it is like class conscious. But he's in even hotter water now. Several newspapers, including USA Today Network and the New York Times, announced they'll stop publishing the Dilbert comic strip. On your time video. On your okay, are we just gonna play the clip? Wow, it does it doesn't have the clip.
Okay, thank you. Wow, you couldn't include. Okay, no, fine. No, I'll look for it. No, that's no, no, fine. That's fine. Just, r just run the quotes over your automatic, stupid c color palette swap. <laughs> Never trust a news site. Never. For no reason should you ever go to a news site and think this will contain the information I'm looking for. From everyone's favorite progressive advocate, Brooklyn Dad. According to this, that was sarcasm. So if if you know nearly half of all blacks uh, are not okay with white people, according to this poll, not according to me, according to this poll, uh, that's a hate group. That's a hate group, and I don't want to have anything to do with them. And I would say, you know, based on the current way things are going, the best advice I would give to white people is to get the hell away from black people. Just well, that's pretty blatant. The poll that he's referring to is one which asked a variety of Mer uh, Americans whether or not they agreed with or approved of the statement, it's okay to be white. Uh, something like 40% of black people did not approve of the statement, it's okay to be white. So Scott Adams, who was a very smart man, interprets this as black people saying it's not okay to be white. Of course, it's worth noting that the phrase, it's okay to be white, is literally a white supremacist 4chan psyop that was constructed as a dog whistly and leading way to promote a white-centric political agenda in a way that sounds like it's, uh, you know, unambiguous and neutral. It's kind of like the arguments people will make where they're like, well, if you're okay with black pride, why aren't you okay with white pride? And it's like, in the abstract, I'm fine with the idea of like plenty of white pride, uh, like culture festivals. There are for the Italians, the Irish, the Polish, the et cetera, et cetera. So the problem is, is that when you actually say white pride and get together with a group of other people who are saying white pride, you don't see people celebrating ethnic cuisine. You get January 6th or like Charlottesville. The real problem here, let's face it, is with white people, because I have been to events full of people saying Black Pride, and you know what I got there? Cool Kwanzaa hats and tasty food. If you go, however, to a rally of people who are uh, screaming White Pride, the most you're liable to get is uh, your teeth kicked in, or, I don't know, a bunch of cool shots of people um, failing to spray paint swastikas on the sides of synagogues. So, it's, it's one of those leading question things. Do black people approve of the statement, it's okay to be white? Well, considering the fact that the statement was literally constructed to, uh, you know, disingenuously promote a white supremacist agenda, I would hope not. Uh, are black people okay, however, with white people existing at all? At least some of them. Get the f*** away. Get, where, wherever you have to go, just get away. Because there's no fixing this. This can't be fixed. Right, this can't be fixed. You just have to escape. So that's what I did. I went to a neighborhood where you know I have a very low black population, because unfortunately there you know there's a high correlation between the density. And this is according to Don Lemon, by the way. Um, so here I'm just quoting Don Lemon when when he notes that the when he lived in a uh, mostly black neighborhood. Again, please keep in mind that this isn't just some random far-right culture war guy. This guy is one of the most, at least up until now, beloved American comic strip artists ever. Dilbert is one of the most well-known and culturally influential, uh, uh, you know, newspaper comic strips just in the history of that medium of sharing information. Oh no, he's been crazy for a while, for sure. Scott, I do genuinely think that Scott Adams is kind of insane. And he's been getting worse with time. But this is still, like, a lot. Yeah, there's a big difference between suspecting the Dilbert guy is kind of a conservative and him, like, see Kyling at the beginning of every one of his podcast episodes. It's, like, there's, there's definitely, like, a tone shift here. But there were a bunch of problems that he didn't see in white neighborhoods. So even Don Lemon sees... Dog, that's crazy. Black neighborhoods have problems that you don't necessarily see in white... I wonder, I wonder why that is. That's crazy. A big difference in your own quality of living based on where you live and who's there. Oh, dude, majority black areas have different average qualities of life than majority white areas. That's crazy, man. I'm just now reading a big textbook called America, and I'm learning all this for the first time. 
I'm like I'm like that that muscular guy with the Snapchat. Like, um, dude, just found out about racism. Breaks my heart. So I, I think it makes no sense whatsoever as a uh, white citizen of America to try to help black citizens anymore. Wow. That's blatant. Bosh, he lost his son at some point, so that's probably why he's like this. Didn't he say something really strange about his son at some point? He did lose his son. Didn't he say something very weird about his dead son? Like, it was very weird. Like, ext But I don't remember what he said. I just remember there being something really weird. He said that he would kill his son if he was troubled. Is that it? Okay, okay, French Vanilla found it. I really do think he's been losing it. Conservatism does tend to appeal to the mentally ill. When a young male, let's say 14 to 19, is a danger to himself and others, society gives the supporting family two options. Watch people die, kill your own son. Those are your only options. I chose number one and watched my stepson die. I was relieved he took no one else with him. Uh, beloved comic Scott Adams. It doesn't make sense. It's no longer a rational impulse. And so I'm, I'm going uh, I'm to back off from being helpful to black America. Warning going out to all black Americans, okay? The, the Scott Adams welfare program is canceled, all right? Yeah, the, the, the Dilbert reparations program uh, is, is being deconstructed as we speak. It's over. It's over, and it's not going to get better. Because it doesn't seem like it pays off. Like, I've been doing it all my life, and I've been... The only outcome is I, be, I get called a racist. That's the only outcome. <laughs> it makes no sense to help black Americans if you're white. Uh, the, the, it's over. It's just, yeah, don't, it's over. Don't even think it's worth trying. Totally not trying. And there we go. You didn't expect that today, did you? <laughs> but those who don't want to focus on education, you just need to get away from them. Just get as much distance as you can. That's my recommendation. Um, and I'm also really sick of seeing video after video of black Americans beating up non-black citizens. Oh man, he's full on doing the thing where like, he scrolls Twitter on like the, the white nat pages. Uh, where they where they have like three video clips of black people punching white people that are from like 2012 or something. Do you remember that one guy I debated? The guy, the the boomer, the the boomer rap guy, the one who talked really fast, who was like, "Yeah, I keep a compilation of black people beating up white people on my phone, so I can watch it to remind myself of the hate that I feel." Oh my god, man! It's like full, like fully mentally ill. It, like it's actually, oh man. Oh here. <laughs> Here's Jesse Lee Peterson defending everything that he's saying, so that's good. Um, thank you. Thank you, JLP. You, my hero. Um, oh my god. <laughs> Amazing! I, I'm, I'm, so, I'm just looking. There's, there's so much, like, discourse about this. Uh, um, thank you, Jenny Tightpants. Uh, ben Garrison made a comic making fun of him. How far gone do you have to be for this to be the timeline? Dilbert's like, let's be friends. Oh, look at the fucking black people, dude. Look, me too. This is, this is black America after it's been announced that the Dilbert reparations plan has been canceled by Scott Adams over here. Okay. This is, they were, they were all arriving at the office to get their, their Dilbert checks and, and, and Dilbert's going out to say hi to them and Scott Adams racing out to pull him back incredible oh my god <laughs> you could tell he really raced this one out too because he didn't have time to label all four of these people black americans um open parentheses disapproving close parentheses yeah he really he really like the right out the presses on this one oh and it's a bit of an addition elon musk raced to the defense of scott adams because he is literally a white south african afrikaner who grew up during uh, apartheid the media is racist. For a very long time, the U.S. media was racist against non-white people. Now they're racist against whites and Asians. Same thing happened with elite colleges and high schools in America. Maybe they can try not being racist. Uh, there was one really funny one that I'm trying to find where he replied to Scott Adams whining about being canceled with like, uh, okay, wow, people are freaking out. What did Scott Adams say anyway? 
and then he deleted that tweet. I, I really want to find that because it's so funny. It's so incredibly funny. Like th this dumbass, like th this guy's literally doing like a clanner rally on his podcast. He's like, what do you even say? And then even, even Elon has to f delete it. Oh yeah, this one. And he deleted that post shortly afterwards. God, it's so funny. Okay, wait, let's finish the clip. You know, I realize it's anecdotal and it, you know, it doesn't give me a, a full picture of what's happening, but every damn day I look on social media and there's some black person beating the shit out of some white person. See, this, oh man, he has like Twitter version of Fox News Boomer Brain. This is, it's because of the people he follows, you know? I've I've literally seen like this rabbit hole. One of the one of the people who posts this the most is uh, Paul Joseph Watson. Um, PJW will const uh, to finish the segment. The conclusion for everyone now, not just not just the YouTube vod watchers, but also the live stream watchers, uh, is that racism is bad, and this is very funny. Um, Scott Adams is not mentally well, and his mental unwellness is an explanation, but not an excuse for his virulent racism. The racism that he is demonstrating here is not just your average run-of-the-mill ordinary old guy unfamiliarity with progressive talking points. It is some actual like white nationalist. My my feed is full of like white nationalists posting videos of black people beating up white people from like 10 years ago. Uh, I think we need a full like national separation of the races. That is literally what he's advocating for. Uh, it is some pretty extreme hardcore racism and the loss of so many of his comic strip publications is fully justified.